York State now requires higher levels of air tightness in newly constructed and renovated residential buildings. The new Energy Code also requires a test to demonstrate air tightness when construction is complete. These new standards are more stringent than in previous versions of the code. To meet these standards, architects will need to plan for air sealing earlier in the process, include air sealing details in their construction drawings, and communicate with a builder and owner about air sealing. In this video, we will discuss the level of air sealing required by the new code and some tips on how to achieve that level. Let's start with the basics. If you are building a single-family home or a residential building three stories or less, this law applies to your project. According to the new energy code, when a residential building is completed, it must have an air leakage rate of three air changes per hour or less at a pressure of 50 pascals. Air changes per hour is a standardized measurement used to describe how leaky a building is. It indicates how much air leaks into or out of a building. Imagine all the cracks and gaps in a building are combined into one large opening. A 2,500 square foot home with three air changes per hour has leaks that add up to a 150 square inch hole, which is about the equivalent area of a tabletop grill. This is the maximum amount of air leakage allowed in a newly constructed or renovated residential building today. A house with a continuous air barrier is sealed at all seams, corners, penetrations, and joints. Code requires that a continuous air barrier is depicted on the construction documents, and it is aligned with the building thermal envelope. If you have to lift your pencil to trace the air barrier, it is not continuous. The code provides a detailed list of 15 locations to focus on. All 15 combined can be boiled down to air sealing the attic, windows, walls, and floors, and air sealing the joints between materials and between assemblies. The most likely places for gaps to develop in the air barrier are where dissimilar materials meet. The architect will want to be particularly careful to provide air sealing details for these places. Overall, the goal is for the architect to provide enough information in the drawings so that the builder will understand what needs to be sealed at each location. All of this air sealing can be done with conventional materials. Once construction is completed, the law requires that a blower door test is used to demonstrate air tightness of three air changes per hour or less. A blower door is a high power fan that is set in a doorway to create a pressure differential of 50 pascals between the inside and the outside of the house. This pressure difference pulls air in through any openings, including cracks between materials and gaps around penetrations. The blower door test used to comply with the law must be performed when the structure is complete, including all drywall installed and all penetrations properly sealed. All HVAC systems must also be installed, and all subcontractors should have completed their work so no further inadvertent penetrations are made. It is good practice to perform preliminary blower door tests during construction to make sure the project is on track to pass the final blower door test and to avoid costly delays. It is cheaper and easier to repair air leaks before the drywall is completed. So let's review. New York State Energy Code requires that newly constructed or renovated residential buildings must use a blower door test to demonstrate an air tightness level of three air changes per hour or less at 50 pascals. Best practice is to plan early for a continuous air barrier, detail air sealing in construction drawings, and communicate thoroughly with the builder and homeowner about air sealing. Check out our website for more information about complying with the code in New York City and New York State.